Hello, digital media students, Adriana Broger. And in today's video, I'm going to show you a little bit of the account user settings uh, when you are in YouTube. So let's go ahead and do this. And I'm gonna show you how you would upload your video and manage your videos. So to do that, I'm going to share my screen. When you're in YouTube, this portion of YouTube is actually called studio. So let's go ahead and take a look at this um, just as a regular page. Here's an example of have enjoyed very much our time for any all of the when they when they click on a link, it's going to look like this. This will this is what it appears as on YouTube. And in order to work on this, uh, there are a couple of things that we're going to want to do. And that is uh, clicking over in let me move my little zoom control here. Um, so we can actually click here and we're going to go to YouTube studio. So you can do that. You can also go here, um, and then you can go to your videos and either way, that's going to take us to the same spot. So what this is, is our dashboard and the back end of our channel. And here we can do a number of different functions, um, such as, um, work on permissions for our videos. So for example, if you have a video that has a specific audience and it's not meant for the, the public, then you would want to post that as an unlisted video, which means that only the people with the link, only the people who you give the link to will be able to access your video. Um, and then we have some videos here that are, most of our videos are unlisted. But here's an example of a private video. And a private video is one where only people that, um, that you choose can see the video. So you still have some control. And the difference between the two is that when it's unlisted, let's say that I create an unlisted video and I share the link with you. So then you have the link to that unlisted video. Now, then if you wanted to share that link with someone else, then that link would work for them. So you then as the originator don't necessarily keep the control of who gets to see that it's anyone with the link versus private. You do have control. Um, so only you and people who you choose can see this video. You might wonder why would somebody create a video and then have nobody see them? Why would we do something like that? Here's one example. Maybe you have a team of people that you're working with, the person that you're creating the video for, let's say it's like a, um, a commercial production, and you have a client, and you're working with this client to produce their video, but you have a rough draft, and it's not yet ready for public consumption. So you don't want to publicly post that, because it's still in draft mode. So you have a rough cut and you want to share that rough cut with the client. What you would want to do is go into YouTube. You want to create an unlisted link and then send that link over to your client so that they can then provide you with feedback and then you can go from there. And then finally, when you're ready to publish the actual video, then you would move into publishing a public video. And you would see that here where it's indicated with the little green eye and then everyone with this uh, with this setting, everyone can see this video. So now let's take a, a look here. And this back end also gives us other information, such as here are all the various uh, videos that we've uploaded and lots of videos because we started, I believe that this channel, I started it in probably 2000. 14. So it's a little bit older. And um, certainly we're doing way more videos these days in the virtual world than we were previously in terms of instruction and curriculum. A lot of that was happening in the in person classroom, but now we've shifted to online. So you can find a lot of material here. And some of the material that we have for a specific class is listed as unlisted because it's just for the people in that class to watch. So our goal is not to have um, high volume views, but really rather make sure that the content for that specific audience um, is made available for them. And then others, of course, we, we do want to see uh, that folks are seeing them because they're made for public consumption. Okay, so there's the video. It gives you a thumbnail. Now, this thumbnail, we talked about this previously. The thumbnail is actually a really big thing with YouTube. Uh, you will see that sometimes if you go, um, well, let's do it together. What we see here is that a number of 
images pop up right away. Now, these images are the thumbnail. And the thumbnail is really handy because it gives people an indicator as to what the video is going to be about. And so it's kind of a teaser, if you will. You can do something outrageous, and I'm sure we can find some here. Um, I don't know. Sometimes they're like, here's one that I would call outrageous, right? So it's got like the emojis and then a face and, and just it looks like it's it's getting it wants some reaction um and so you can have like horrifying is in the title so again it, it's looking for some reaction and then there are others where you know clearly it just really wants to get you to this topic um and so we can see these different things uh that are thumbnails and they are handy because you can use the thumbnail as a tool to let folks know again what your video is going to be about and also to kind of get them to click. So it's kind of bait. Um, and canva.com is a great tool for that. But I'm not gonna go into that in this video. You can do it in Canva, you can do it in Photoshop. I mean, there's so many different ways to create this. But I tend to think that Canva uh, for content creation is uh, very easy in terms of just getting this, this up and going. So I will address that in a different video, not in this one, but here's your thumbnail. You can see from these thumbnails that sometimes I make them in Canva, like this one, if I want it to really grab an audience. If I'm doing these typically for a small number of people, I don't always do it. It depends on the time, um, but there you go. That's the thumbnail. Okay, now here, these are controls. So this will be details. And what are details? These are the video details. So if I click in this, I can have, I can see what my title was, I can see what my description was, and I can edit that. So let's take a look at that together. So here you go. Here's my title. Here's my description. And when you're thinking about descriptions on YouTube, there are so many different ways to consider this. What I like to do is remember that all the content is important and it's all you can, if somebody's already looking at your YouTube video, but maybe they haven't been to your website, then it's a good idea to include all of that information um, within that description. So telling people what your website is, what your social media is, all of these different things. You can see lots of really good examples of this. Um, let's go here on any one of these. So let's go, let's look at this TED talk. Um, this is a, a difficult story, but if we go here, exactly this kind of thing. So very, this is a great example of follow us on our socials. Here's where you get more information. And that's kind of the, the thinking that I had uh, when we designed this and implemented this because we didn't, we weren't always doing this um, in terms of, pushing people towards what uh, these different links were. And I think that it's just a very handy tool. And so you can go ahead and edit your description, edit your information there. And then thumbnail, this is where you can choose what you're going to upload. Or again, and what it's doing here, if you don't upload one, um, create one separately and then upload it into this system, then what it's gonna do is uh, take a couple of still frames from your video and then give you those options where you can choose in between those. Or you also have the option, of course, of uploading your own. So you can select a picture that it shows you or upload. Then playlist. We like to use playlists because we have, again, a lot of videos and our videos are created for different things, different audiences. And sometimes if it's going to be um, a video collection for a specific group, then it's easy for us to do a playlist. And you can check that out and see if that works for you. Uh, something that's new is, uh, according to the Children's Online Privacy Act, YouTube started asking folks, uh, content creators, uh, is this made for kids? Is it not made for kids? And so this is not made for kids. And basically, you can address that question, like, is this made for kids or not? It's a yes or no. Um, and this has to do with um, with ads and notifications. Then we're going to uh, move out of this and you can do, again, you can change visibility. Um, you can see if there is a, a copyright claim or whatever different kind of issues there might be um, in your video. You can see analytics and analytics on the back end, fairly new video for us. We actually just uploaded this yesterday. Um, so it's gotten 15 views. We have not promoted this at all. We just uploaded it and it's been really quiet so we uh, 
typically we'll do that. We'll publish here and then we'll uh, take it to social media and then throw it out from there. Okay, so that was that. Uh, and then here again, this is analytics. So the same things that we were seeing there, we can access here. So you can also see comments like this isn't um, your own comments, but rather comments that folks have left you. And obviously that would be there if you have it as public, um, you would have more likelihood of having comments than you would if it were unlisted, of course, but that's, that's obvious. Um, this is just to get you to look at it in the view that a visitor seeing your um, video on YouTube would look at it. And then here there are uh, some other options. So you can always, if you upload and maybe you uh, lose your original file, you can download content from here. Um, you can get shareable links and all kinds of things there. Visibility here, restrictions, sometimes copyright claims. So what does this mean? Basically, it's that you want to make sure you have permissions to uh, to use the content that you're using because this is particularly important for people who are looking to monetize um, from their content. In our case, we are not. And so it's never a concern for me. Um, we can also, if, if something says that there's a copyright claim, we can cite fair use in many cases. Okay. Um, and then date, obviously that what that means and views, how many people have watched it and how many comments or likes. Comments, yes, comments, and then likes here. Um, so that's that. Now we finally get to how do you get a YouTube? All right, so you typically, al you already have a YouTube channel if you have a Google um, account and you would have a Google account if you have a Gmail account. And there are some things that some folks don't know. So I'm just going to show you this. And if everybody in the room knows it, then you know, please just be patient because I'm sure there's someone in the room who's new to this. So once you check your Gmail account, right, you typically you land in a spot that looks like this. And then uh, we can come here, click on this, and then you go here and you actually have access to a YouTube account. From this YouTube account, um, you can click here and here you can, hold on, I have, okay. So here we can click here and you would click on this little movie icon that says create. And then we go ahead and we click here and you go to upload video. Now from upload video, the screen is gonna change and it's going to look like this. At this point now, all you have to do is select your file. So this is really important if you um, have just finish exporting a video in Premiere, you wanna make sure that you know where that video is. When you go to select your file, you have to know where your file is. So is that on an external hard drive? Is that on your desktop? Is that in a specific folder? You just wanna make sure that you're managing your file so that you are not only selecting um, you know the name and where it's located, but that you've also selected the correct version. And that's where file naming uh, comes along. And what Leo and I have you all do, what we recommend is that you name things according to um, version one, version two, version three, four, because ultimately when we understand video and content creation um, as something that you, you go back to and you tweak um, until it's it's ready for publication, you're going to end up with different versions of it. And this kind of numbering convention will help you keep track of that. So then you just select your file. And then let's say that we're going to pick this one just for the sake of doing that. Okay, so from here on this page, what we can see is that we've selected our file and YouTube is now uploading this to YouTube. So whatever the file's name is will show up under the title. That doesn't mean that that's what you have to keep it as. So we're going to go in there and we're going to change that to this is a test. And then here is your description. Now, what I recommend for content creators is to have a space where you um, have a solid page that lives perhaps in your Google Drive. And I'll show you an example of that. Okay. YouTube description. <clears throat> okay. So this is our current description that we consistently use. The reason that this is really handy is so that you don't have to start thinking, now, what did I say again? If you have it on a drive, cloud-based system, then you can just go copy and paste and then go ahead and drop it into your, your video. So 
right here. You would then paste that information there. And I always recommend to everybody that you download Grammarly. It's a Chrome extension and it's free and it will help clean up any uh, grammar issues that you might have. Then here is your thumbnail. And again, this is uploading. So it's going to select some frames and then we can choose from there or we can go ahead and upload our own if we've created that playlist. So remember, I showed you about that. You can select your playlist here. And then here, you're going to say whether or not this was made for kids. In this case, we're going to say no. And then we're going to say next. And as you can see, it is now uploading our video here. I always I don't have any of this uh, ready. So I we just skip this part and then we go to checks. And this, you, you actually have to wait until the standard definition is uploaded and ours is not yet, um, but that's okay. So I can go here and I'm going to say, this is uh, going to be a private link because I'm really just testing this. And then share privately. This is where you have that permission to either, like I said, have it private, where only you and people with the link have access, where you have this, uh, shared publicly where anybody can see it or privately and who you give permission to. So it's very different from the um, unlisted where that link can then be passed on from person to person. As long as they have the link, they can watch the content. In this case, you have more control. So you would say who you're going to share it with and you actually enter their email here and that's how they get permission to view your content. And you can say notify them via email or or whatnot. OK, so um, the only thing to be sure of there is that folks have to be signed into a uh, Gmail account or a Google account, uh, which is Gmail. OK, and that is going to be it. Uh, so this is just our test. So I'm actually going to dump this when we're done. But if I said save, it is going to um, continue uploading and then it is actually going to show up for us in just a moment right here. So we can see that 27% of this is done, um, that it's pending. And so if I click, it'll usually give us, yeah, a YouTube link already. And here it's gonna say it's not done uploading. So processing this, you'll have to come back later. And there you go. That is a sort of brief overview of publishing to YouTube. So we hope that this was helpful for those of you who needed to see uh, the process. And soon enough, you are going to be publishing and you will have your own channel to maintain. So we wish you well and wish you lots of luck in your content creation.